In this video, we're going to show you how to add a gauge record. To start, let's make our way to our gauges. We can click the gauge icon, and then we can select a view to view our gauges in. Now on the right hand side, we can click the add button. And then here we can start adding our gauge. We can enter the last and next calibration due dates. We also have certain fields like control number, serial number, and asset number. Those are going to be our unique identifiers for our gauge record. These cannot have duplicate values, so we want to make sure that we don't have any of those. We can also hide certain fields, and we can also add custom fields to really customize our gauge record form. If we scroll down, we can choose the type of gauge that we're entering. We have type ahead, so you don't have to worry about misspelling how a tool is spelled. We can also select it from a list, or we can add another one if we're an admin or an owner of the account. We can also add additional values and delete values in general settings. On the right hand side, we can add an image of our gauge record, select which one we want, and now that image will appear here on the gauge record form. We can also choose to make this gauge a reference standard, so if we select yes, this will make it so that it's selectable when we add our calibration test template. We could also hide a good amount of fields too in localization if we have a plan that supports it. Down here, we can select location and area for the tool. These can also be renamed to whatever you'd like, and we can also add additional values as well. These two fields right here, assignee and notification list, have a unique role in gauge lists. Assignee lets you assign specific people to specific gauges, so they only get notifications for those specific tools. If we hit select, we can add a person, and then their name and their email will appear between square brackets. We can also add somebody by clicking the add button, again by adding their name first, and then we would add their email between square brackets. This would allow them to get emails for that specific tool. This field has an ownership role assigned to it, but the notification list does not. And there can only be one value assigned in the assignee value. As opposed to the notification list, where multiple values can be entered and multiple people can get notifications for this specific tool. Down here we have our scheduling information. This is where we're going to want to go to schedule our gauges. So here we can select schedule, and we can choose the duration that it can go between calibrations. This is important because when we go to perform a calibration test, it will automatically pull this data in and give us our next due date based on the scheduling information we set up here. You can see we have other options as well. If you calibrate at the beginning or end of the month, it'll automatically push that date regardless of where it falls to the beginning or end of that month. We can also choose an option for something like before each use. So if it's not necessarily a certain date that it's calibrating towards, but you want to alert people that they do want to check it before each time they use it. Most people would go with schedule and input the date. We could also choose the environment and any instructions we want. And we could also upload any attachments as well. It's important that we don't upload a calibration certificates here. We're going to want to create a calibration record that holds that certificate so that has a unique identifiable traceable record for that calibration certificate. Down here, if we're doing a test internally, we can create a calibration test template. So we'd select yes. We could copy it from another gauge. Or for setting it up for the first time, we could build out our test points by adding additional rows. We could add the nominal, minimum, and maximum values manually, or we can use calculation assist if we have that set up in our general settings. If we do, this cog icon will appear. We'll click that, and then here we could enter our test points. So if we're testing at two inches, we could choose range or spread. Range, we would have to enter the minimum and maximum values based on the tolerances. But if we do something like spread, well, that we can calculate it for us. We get to enter our tolerance. And then I'm going to copy it and paste it over into our plus tolerance and select the units of measurement. And then it will give us our minimum and maximum accepted values. We could even test this. If we put in something that's outside of spec. We can hit test. We see it flags it as incorrect. But if we select the nominal value, we test it again, and we could see it did pass. So we could do that very quickly to build out our test templates for each of our test points. We do so for the next two. Now I'm just going to paste in our tolerances and then select our units of measurement. And then I'll do it for the last one. And just like that, we built out our test template. We can also view the calibration history for this tool if we have any, and all the records will be there and links will take us to those actual records. And then we'll go and hit save. And that is how we add a gauge record. 
We can also print a label as well, out of calibration now at this point, and we could also clone the gauge if we'd like. And now right now we're in edit mode, but we can go back to view mode to see how that would look. And that's how we would view our gauge. This has been how to add a gauge record in GageList. Thank you.